Formula One is not just about racing, it's also a game of chess. No matter how fast and well-engineered a car is, if it can't keep up with the game, then it's just a fast car. Hello, and welcome back to our channel, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about what makes up the gist of F1. It's not about the cars, it's not about the drivers, and it's not about the tracks. It's all about some of the best and unorthodox strategies in the entire history of F1 that has paid off quite well. So here are the top six best strategies in F1 history. Number 1. Sterling Moss at the 1958 Argentine Grand Prix In F1, it's pretty important for a team to have someone decisive and strategic to call the shots in dire times. And with Sterling Moss working together hand in hand with his team owner Rob Walker at the 1958 Argentine Grand Prix, we could honestly say that they made up a pretty good team. This is a strategy that best describes the phrase strategic bluff. Now, for starters, before Ferrari had been raking in the top spots this season, it's important to note that the prancing horses have been in the business of F1 for quite some time now. So far, going back in the sport's early days, back in 1958, when they had one of the best cars running on the tracks. Now, Moss's car, a 1.96-litre Cooper Climax T43, did not have the same power as the 2.5-litre Ferrari cars had. He just brought a knife to a gunfight. But that didn't stop them. Both Moss and Walker knew their disadvantages, especially when they're taking into account the time that they expected to lose when he's going to change his tires. But they have managed to come up with the idea to make a single set of tires last until they see the checkered flag. When Juan Manuel Fangio of Maserati pitted, Moss didn't waste time in taking the lead. Ferrari driver Luigi Musso had only then realized that Moss didn't actually change his tires when he stopped by to pit. It was essentially a fake pit. Now, it was too late to catch up. Moss, driving in the oilier parts of the track to reduce the damage on his tires, kept his pace even when they were literally already begging to be changed. It was quite the risk, but it was worth it as he clinched the first spot by just under 2.7 seconds. Number 2. Gerard Berger at the 1986 Mexican Grand Prix Gerard Berger took a marathon during the 1986 Mexican Grand Prix, as his team had then experimented and developed a very risky no-pit-stop strategy using his Pirelli tires. Berger wasn't in pole position at the time, so there was a pretty good challenge in trying to catch up to the race leaders before you. He started out in the fourth place and drove in the third spot right behind Nelson Piquet's Williams and Ayrton Senna's Lotus in the early minutes of the race, before passing by Alain Prost's McLaren. When all of the three cars ahead of him had decided to go for a pit stop, he knew that this was his chance. Berger took over as the race leader on lap 36, while expecting that the people he just surpassed would be coming right back to put pressure on him to give up his position. Moreover, his no pit stop strategy was also pretty daring given that tyre degradation was something that they have to keep track of. Surprisingly though, it seemed like the F1 gods had ruled in his favour, that his tyres had managed to stay until the end, ultimately giving him the victory during the race. But how did it happen? Well, the secret to this strategy relies mostly on just putting the right amount of pressure on the tyres that are in different compounds. Taking into consideration the extra loads that it would have to endure and the ever-changing demands on both the front and rear axle. Number 3. Mika Salo at the 1997 Monaco Grand Prix Underdog stories are something that everyone likes to hear, and during the 1997 Monaco Grand Prix, Mika Salo might have just given us the best one yet. During that race, the rain was pouring pretty hard, and driving with an F1 car is simply not the same thing when it's raining. Roads are slippery, and races tend to be slower than usual. With this Grand Prix, the fastest lap was at least 35 seconds off the pole position, which translated to the race ending at the two-hour limit, with only 62 out of the 78 laps completed. Knowing this, Salo had seen an opportunity to score his team, Tyrrell, the only points that they would have for the season, and he took it right there and then. With the rain, Salo attempted to imitate Berger's strategy of no pit stops. Given that his car didn't need to box at the moment, it still needed Salo's expertise so that changes in order to optimize the car would happen. 
Once they knew that it was a strategy that had so much potential to get those points, they didn't hold back. The funny thing though, because Sarlo didn't even think that he would be able to make it happen, since he'd been caught up in an accident in the second lap, coupled with the fact that the track's conditions weren't really great, it was a miracle that he did. He even finished fifth place, the highest his team had for that season. Number 4. Giancarlo Fisichella at the 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix It does seem like the best strategies come out when it's raining, because the race during the 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix with Giancarlo Fisichella was done in the same conditions. Fisichella had qualified for the 8th place during that time, and had stayed in that position after the safety car deployed on the first lap. It was quite an unusual move, but the goal was set pretty clearly. Fisichella would be stopping earlier than intended, right after the safety car was deployed, so he took the chance to pump up some fuel until he got to 75% of the car's tank capacity, allowing for him to go the distance without ever having to box again. But in case a red flag was raised, the race would not have to be restarted again. The tactic had worked as it was intended to do, as he then zoomed on to pass by Kimi Raikkonen, who was at that time leading the race and driving for McLaren. But then came along Jaguar's Mark Webber, crashing and losing a wheel that got tangled in Fernando Alonso and the red flag was raised. Raikkonen was first declared the winner of that Grand Prix, but days later, after a lot of deliberations with the FIA correcting a timing countback error, Fisichella was then hailed as the winner. Number 5. Michael Schumacher at the 2004 French Grand Prix The man, the myth, and the legend. This would not be a good F1 history if it did not include an entry from one of the sport's greatest of all time, Michael Schumacher. Now, Schumacher has had a lot of memorable races to date, and it's hard picking the right one, but the 2004 French Grand Prix was a race that cemented why he is what he is today. The Michael Schumacher. During this race, Schumacher's Ferrari had been behind then Renault's Fernando Alonso in the pole position. Ferrari had initially planned for Schumacher to commit to three stops, but master strategist Luca Baldessari had come prepared and devised a four-stop plan just in case his boy wasn't going to get some clean air. With Alonso pushing back and not showing signs of giving up his spot, Schumacher had then gone on for four stops. Schumacher raced with a very light load once he got to his second stop on lap 29. Alonso was forced to stop earlier, which meant that he would be coming out of the pit stops just behind Schumacher. Schumacher then fastened his pace and grabbed more than enough time in his third and fourth stint to come out of his final stop right ahead of Alonso. It's pretty neat because he spent more time stopping than Alonso and he still emerged victorious. Number 6. Sebastian Vettel at the 2010 Italian Grand Prix Here's one strategy from one of the best active F1 drivers out there. It's from the four-time F1 world champion Sebastian Vettel. He had just been driving for Red Bull during the 2010 Italian Grand Prix at Monza and had originally planned to stop around the 14th and 15th lap. But in the end, he decided to stay on his set of starting Bridgestones up until lap 52. Just like what had happened recently with Williams' Alex Albon in Australia, he chose to pit right at the end of the penultimate lap to switch to the other tyre compound. The decision would then prove to have worked perfectly for Vettel, as it had allowed him to lap at a decent pace while taking advantage of the clean air. He then took on the opportunity to jump on Williams' Nico Hülkenberg, Mercedes' Nico Rosberg, and his fellow Red Bull driver Mark Webber. With everyone else ahead of him encountering their own problems, it paved the way for Vettel to take a pit stop and cross the chequered flag in fourth place. And that is it for some of the best racing strategies that we've seen in F1's entire history. Want to see something from our channel? Let us know by commenting on the section down below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more of our updates.